Some people use music to stay happy and we definitely use the carnival period to, to release our stress and to stay a little bit happy. But how do we do that in a time when we're likely to not have carnival again in the way that we are accustomed to or the way that we would like to? This morning, we're chatting about how to manage grief inside of a pandemic. I want to welcome counseling psychologist at Enriched Life Limited, Rhonda Thompson-Benjamin. Good morning to you, Rhonda. Good morning to you and good morning to Trinidad and Tobago. All right, let's 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 jump into it one time. I mean, in, in Trinidad and Tobago, we definitely use lots of varying coping mechanisms. You know, sometimes people go to the bar, sometimes people go online, they go and party, and they do other things to kind of just distract themselves from grief. But in this pandemic, we had to face ourselves. We had to sit with ourselves and sit with our grief. How has that impacted us as a people, uh, or at least from your observations? I think, first of all, let me extend my deepest condolences to those who would have lost family members during this difficult period. Uh, we are accustomed coping in a particular way. And because of the stay-at-home orders, the limits in terms of the size of in-person gatherings, uh, persons, family members, and friends are finding it very difficult to grieve. So we find that persons are attending funerals online, which may be helpful, but it does not afford that human interaction. So it's very important that we find new and innovative ways to really cope with grief, because grief is something that is never easy. And some things that we can utilize, we, we want to really develop health, healthy coping mechanisms. Because naturally, we can uh, revert to doing things that may really impact our general health. And especially during this period, we want to practice things that would not affect our lives negatively in any way. So I think it's important for us to stay connected. Yes, we may not be able to visit everyone, but we can have conference calls where we can share experiences of our family members. You know, just become really creative and share photos. And um, we can also get our community involved. So um, everybody may not be able to come to the church service. And sometimes persons are going straight to the cemetery. Um, but we can have a memorial service to really celebrate the life of our loved, loved ones. You know, um, we can also cope by doing those things that we can do. Um, you know, if you are a person that enjoys nature, just stepping out and maybe going on a hike while following all our protocols, of course, those things might be helpful in terms of navigating and processing um, your loss, yeah? So finding yeah. those things that you enjoy, those are some things that we can really utilize to get through this process. You know, I'm, I'm always curious about healthy coping mechanisms because, you know, we, we always know about the ones that are not so good for us in the sometimes short and long term. Uh, can you give me yeah. some, more, some more examples of, so if I'm not a nature person, if I don't like to go outside that much, and I, I still, you know, have to deal with grief. How, how can I cope? You said conference calls with, with family members is one thing, you know, having yeah. the memorial service is another thing. But that's all in the, in the short term when somebody passes away and we, we commune. Mm -hmm. But grief yeah. kind of goes on a bit longer than, than that. How, right. do we, how do we find healthy ways to, to cope? What are some, some more examples that you can give? First of all, uh, you need to look back at your life experiences. And when you would have experienced difficult times, what are the things that helped you through? We understand that this is a different experience, but sometimes tapping into those things that you would have done previously might be really helpful. And sometimes, you know, it might be difficult for you to navigate the experience on your own. So it's important that you communicate what you need to your family members or friends or those who may be able to support you in any way, asking for any type of instrumental support. So if you realize that you are maybe going through a, dep a depression phase in terms of grief, asking for instrumental support. Hey, can you stop by the grocery for me? You can drop it outside on this particular table. You know, really tapping into those ways that would help us uh, uh, go through this difficult period. Additionally, um, you know, listening to music might be helpful. Um, attending, um, you know, your face, 
faith-based institutions. Um, as Caribbean people, um, I believe that we are still a spiritual. So whatever your faith is, going to um, maybe services online, reaching out to your um, faith, faith-based leader, all these things might be helpful and will be helpful in helping you to deal um, and to cope in this um, very difficult period. Now, Rhonda, you're talking a lot about us taking personal responsibility, and, and sometimes we realize that some people aren't as good at that as we would like them to be. Some people aren't mm -hmm. willing to be as forthcoming with saying, you know, I need help. How do we recognize signs in someone who may be grieving or may be going through that process and does need that help but may be unable to say so? Mm -hmm. So for many persons, uh, they become withdrawn. So if you know uh, that you this person was usually a bubbly person and you find that this person is no longer coming to work, we have to be our brother's keeper. We can't um, stay in our communities and not hear for, from persons uh, for several days and not reach out. It is very important uh, that we, we are uh, vigilant um, that we see sign, understand and see signs and symptoms of grief. This person, uh, they might be coming to work, but you find that they are, are spending extended periods in the washroom. All those things can say this, we have a problem here. Persons may um, make posts on social media and they would say things maybe about suicide or things about life is not worth it, that is an opportunity um, where you can reach out, not in a very intrusive way, but in a way that is general, asking them if you could provide any support. There is nothing wrong with asking what the person needs at the, at, at the present moment. Yeah, and of course, if, if, if it's something that you are unable to assist that person with, really referring them for professional help would be um, extremely important in these cases. Yeah, and it sounds like that's, that's advice for how to help people, you know, how, to, how you can help people who are grieving as well. Uh, Correct. Because, yes. you know, we all have friends and family that we might want to support, but we're really not sure, you know, exactly how we can be there for them. But you're saying that, yeah. you know, you can just ask what they need, and if they give ask. you, if, what if, they, what if they, they keep saying, well, I need nothing? But you're seeing all um, the signs. You, you are seeing all these signs. Tell that person what you are seeing. Listen, I, am, I have noticed that for the past four days, you know, you are not yourself. I know this is not who you are typically. Um, I know you're saying, okay, but I really think that you need assistance. And that person, um, when you are consistent in terms of um, inquiring about this person's um, general well-being, eventually that person may open up. Yeah, right. we have to remember but, that there are stages. Sorry, go ahead. No, I, I just wanted to, I mean, I, I want to just throw in a situation here, right? Because for me, yeah. it's like people are people who are going through grief is oftentimes something traumatizing that has happened. And we know that, that trauma can change people. So is mm -hmm. it that we, when we see these changes, uh, we say, all right, maybe you're going through grief and we try to get them back to who they used to be? Or is it that we just want them to work through their grief? Grief is not a linear process right so persons grieve differently and it's important that we give them the space to uh really understand what they are going through processing that grief because sometimes we just want to make people feel better and sometimes that is not helpful in fact the grieving process is actually helpful so it's important now that we we are educated in terms of the grieving process and understand that there would be some form of denial. There might be anger. Um, this person might begin bargaining. Okay, I, I will do anything that is possible to get back my loved one. Then they might go through a stage of depression and then they may come to that stage of acceptance. But when you realize that the research says after six months, this person would be able to adapt um, and, and cope typically. However, if you realize that years are passing and this person isn't really um, coping well, it's important that you reach out for professional help at that point. Because right. this person might be going through something called complicated grief, which they may need to walk through with a professional. Yeah. Now, in this time, Rhonda, people, every day we get reports of, of dead people on the news. We get yeah. these COVID numbers that are piling up every single day. 
And for lots of people, it's overwhelming. For lots of people, it, it, it triggers the grief that they would have recently gone through or are still going through. How do we help people to, to cope with all of this information overload, with all of these feelings overload, with all of this pandemic, everything that's been just piling up on us? Yeah, it's important that you accept and validate these feelings. Yeah, we are living in a, a time that is difficult. And some people try to re, um, repress these feelings. No, I am okay. I'm not going through anything. But really communicating those feelings, it helps you to really start the process of understanding um, where you are at and where you need to go in terms of the grief process. I think, too, uh, it's important that we really manage our intake um, in terms of the news platforms, social media, etc. cetera. Mm. We already know the trends. We know what we need to do, right? Social distance, washing our hands. So sometimes we really, we do not have to check our social media several times for the day if you realize that this is a point of trigger for you. You can check it maybe once a day, depending on what you can cope with. And of course, uh, as I said, we know the trends, we know what to do, persons are dying. So identify those triggers and have a plan, plan in place just in case I am triggered. What am I going to do? I am going, am I going to call a family member for help? Mm -hmm. Am I going to journal? So having a plan in place when you are triggered might be helpful. All right, so Rhonda, I want to thank you so much for joining us this morning and sharing this information with us. Hopefully, it will reach the ears that need to hear it and that, you know, it can help someone learn how to, to start the process of, of coping with their grief. Definitely. Thank you so much for having me. Not a problem at all. That's Rhonda Thompson, Benjamin, counseling psychologist at Enriched Life Limited, joining us to give us uh, a bit of hope and, and ways to manage grief inside this pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, we can roll the billboard and, and we come back and hit some birthday greetings. <laughs> <laughs>